it still feels a little bit weird to say, but it's Carolina Hurricanes forward Michael Bunting. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Good, man. Does that it, when when does that stop feeling weird? Immediately? Like does that ever? Like I know you've switched teams before, but you've been with the Leafs for a couple of seasons and now you're with a rival. <laughs> yeah. Um it's kind of just, you know, part of the business. Um uh, you know, once you you start a new team, um obviously I really enjoyed my time in Toronto. Um it's it's home here. Um I grew up a a Leaf fan, so I will always cherish uh that that uh that last couple two years of, of playing here um but um that being said i'm I'm really excited to start my uh, next chapter with carolina you know what makes business easier what's that 13 and a half million dollars i bet <laughs> uh yeah um yeah you know obviously um that's a, a little bit of a, a bonus to, to boot. So um, playing the NHL every single day is uh, definitely a privilege. Um, and, yeah, I'm really excited to kind of start this next chapter with Carolina and head down there and, um, you know, start that with meeting the, meeting the team and uh, meeting everybody. Uh, so um, I'll probably head down there in a couple weeks. That's cool, man. Yeah, no, honestly, congrats on the contract, man. Like, it's it's obviously well-earned. You know, you had a couple of great seasons here. I think that you've got a great story, especially given that it seems like, you, you know, you bet on yourself when you came to Toronto. I, I don't know if this has been discussed before. I couldn't find anything on it. But did you have better offers, like, from money standpoint before you decided to come to Toronto? Uh, yeah, I did, actually. I had a, I had a few options um, going to free agency. Obviously, I... I think I only played about 26 NHL games, but, um, you know, that last call up I had in Arizona, I, I had some success. I was able to put up some, um, some good numbers in that little stint. So, um, and then, uh, you know, coming from the American league and not really making that much, um, you know, it, it came down to a decision of, uh, you know, taking the money and, and, um, going somewhere else or, or coming home to Toronto. And I, I knew I wasn't going to make as much here, but I think, uh, when that when that decision came came up, it was it was kind of a no brainer to to come home and, and experience that. Um, you know, I was familiar with Kyle and I was uh, familiar with Sheldon too, so that that helped my decision uh, back then as well. And um, and obviously, you know, it worked out, and I had a great two years here. Did you ever have a moment like after you first signed it for less money, like, oh my God, I'm not a rich guy. Why why did I do this? <laughs> why, how could I how could I turn down that money? Uh, you know what? Honestly, no. I I actually never regretted, uh, you know, um, our signing here in Toronto. Um, I think um, in the end of the day, that was something that I really wanted to do. Um, you know, every, everybody's that you know everybody that grew up in Toronto, obviously, that likes hockey. Hockey are usually fans, so that was uh, that was like myself and, and my family. So um, it was really cool uh, to experience that and and go through all that um, the, these last couple of years. So. I said it before, but I'll, I I will definitely cherish uh, these years uh, forever. So I definitely want to talk about you know your you go into Carolina and the process that happened this off season. But yeah, just like just just because we're on the topic, you know, a lot of guys will say, and and especially guys I think that have a lot of times that haven't even played in Canadian markets will talk about yeah them not looking forward to it, or some people will leave those markets and talk about yeah the difficulty of playing here and. How, how much of that was a consideration for you? Like, did it actually meet your expectation? Like, again, you grew up as a Leaf fan, so you knew what the, I like somewhat what the media climate was going to be. You had to have a pretty strong understanding of, hey, it's cool to be around my family and friends, but that also comes back with, you know, you sit down at the dinner table, now you're playing for, you know, those teams that they're far more intimate with and that they have that connection to. Like, was there, you know, you said it was a dream. You don't regret it. Obviously, you ended up coming here, so you weren't shy from it, especially for less money. But, yeah, how much of that actually met your expectation about maybe the things that you might have been nervous about? Yeah, um, obviously, coming from uh, Arizona, um, it's not that big of a a hockey market uh, compared to Toronto. Um, So I was kind of coming into it expecting – for the media to be a lot and and whatnot just because i you know i grew up here and i know that you know toronto loves loves the leafs and um everybody around it loves the leafs so 
Um, but yeah, I know it was great. Um, all the media that, you know, come into our room and ask questions after the game and stuff, you know, you build relationships with them and, um, they're just doing their job and, um, all of them, all of them were great. Um, you know, it just, it just comes with the territory and, and I, I didn't really shy away from that. I kind of knew that coming in and, um, I, you know, I expected if I had a bad game, it would be in the media and I expected if I had a good game, it'd be in the media. So, um, yeah, you know, that stuff didn't bother me. I, I kind of welcomed it and, and had fun with it as well. I try to, you know, anytime I was, you know, ask questions and, and, and stuff like that to keep it light and, and just have fun. And uh, I feel like I did a pretty g- good job with that. Did anything phase you? Um, you know what? Not like, not really. Um, like it was just more, I was just trying to have fun and, and enjoy it. And I feel like I, I, I did that. And I, I tried to, you know, take it all in um, because at the end of the day, it was really, my first NHL experience. Yes, I definitely did have time in Arizona, but um, it was during the COVID year. Mm-hmm. Um, no fans until um, that end of that season, and um, so really coming into the lease was my my first experience in the NHL, and um, so I, I just try to enjoy it and just take it day by day because, um, yeah, I played over 330 American League games, so this was this was my shot, and I just kind of didn't want to take it for granted and overthink anything and just and just play my game and, and have fun. You know, that's that's actually a pretty interesting perspective. Like that, yeah, you, you got your shot, and then yeah, you had to work your ass off to get there. All those years in the AHL, a little bit of ECHL time, and then yeah, you finally crack the yeah, you crack uh, the Leafs, your hometown team. It's like. Maybe you're not bothered by the opinion of a beat writer or a Twitter person the same way that you would have been if you know you just get handed the shot right away coming out of uh, the OHL or just like after spending only a year in the minors. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's exactly it. I feel I to be honest, like obviously there is pressure always, and mm-hmm. um, everyone puts pressure on themselves. But um, I was definitely just like very appreciative of of the opportunity I was getting, and I was just. Uh, not putting too much pressure on myself. And I feel like that's, that's what helped me succeed here. I just kind of, you know, just went in every day with a smile and, and had fun and enjoyed my time with my teammates and, and played, uh, played hard when I got out there. So, um, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. You played a lot of games too. You was 79 the first year and then you played the full season last year. Uh, we're able yeah. to stay healthy, but okay. Let be honesty time. Did you even, like, when you bet on yourself, when you said, you know what, I'm going to sign this two-year deal, I'm going to do it at, you know, what is ultimately, like, not a huge dollar amount, I'm taking less, did you think it was going to go as well as it did, like, where you're going to score, you know, back-to-back seasons with 23 goals? Um, you know what? Uh, I know I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I kind of, I've always believed in myself, um, even when I spent many, many years in the minors, that, um, that I could play in this league and I uh, can be an effective player. So um, I think it all just started with the, just confidence going up in Arizona and, and then getting my shot and, and proving that. So I kind of just kept building off of that in Toronto. And, and I knew, um, you know, coming in, I remember uh, when free agency opened a little bit of talks and kind of knowing that they were, they were left side side wasn't as strong. So I pictured myself in a in a top nine or top six uh, position, so I kind of just went into uh, training camp and, and aiming for that, and and then kind of just keep going. But um, you know, I built chemistry with uh, Austin and Mitch, and and uh, in that first year, and I kind of just ran with it, and just you know, each game more confidence would build and build, and you kind of you feel like you belong in the NHL, and you feel like you can keep up with everybody. So um, I just kind of work work with that every single day, and. Um, give credit to Mitch and Maddie. You know they've been great to uh, to work with and and to play with. And um, you know they they were a lot of fun to play with. And um, and I definitely uh, have to give them a lot of credit. Yeah, that's it. that's also interesting though because I think that there was an assumption that it, with you taking less money and you taking that deal with Toronto that maybe it was I don't want to say promised to you because yeah it's the National Hockey League but that it would have been strongly implied you would have been given a very, very good opportunity to play with that top line. Like, like how much of that was a part of your initial negotiation to come here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't really have much of a, a leg to stand on. I only played 20, whatever, 26 games, but yeah. they did, they did mention that to me saying, Hey, look, look at our left side. Um, the top three kind of positions are, are wide open and whatever one you fall in will be your spot. So come into camp and, and kind of give it your all and and then we'll see how the season goes so i knew that that you know the top line was was open and and it was an option for me and um 
and then you know that's that's what kind of happened I don't I don't think I started there but you know I just kind of kept going and going and and then um played a few games with with them and and the chemistry just built and and then away we went so it was it was definitely uh it was a lot of fun and um yeah I just kind of just kept building off of uh, my confidence so there's always this thing and I'm sure it's you know harder to play with worse players too at times but you know, there's kind of a cliche in hockey that not everyone can play with great players, right? Not everyone can play with highly talented players, and that sometimes it doesn't mesh that way. Was there something in particular, like when you started playing with those two guys specifically? Because, yeah, they're the guys you spent the most time with, that, you know, you went into focused with a certain goal, or was it more just about, you know, maintaining and playing your game and staying true to yourself? Yeah, I think it was just more maintaining my game and, and, and being true to myself. I, uh, you know, I, I know... Uh, I know how my style is. I, I know what, what makes me successful. So I, I just try to keep, um, keep true to that. And I feel like, um, yeah, I just, I played a hard four check game. And, and once I retrieve the puck, I, I try to make as many plays as I could. And I feel like I, I, I'm able to do that. I feel like I can, I can kind of see the game pretty quick. So obviously playing with uh, those two players or even when I played with Willie too, and um, you gotta be uh thinking quick or, or you're kind of you'll kind of get left behind on the line so um yeah I, I just try to stay true to myself and i ended up uh, meshing pretty well so walk me through this off season a little bit how important was it for you to sign with a contender like when you hit free agency obviously like man you had to get paid right and like you were going to get offers and i'm sure there was more than one but how big a consideration with signing carolina was yeah their current roster yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, obviously playing with Toronto, being a contender every single year. Um, once I, you know, realized that um, it wasn't going to work out here, I transitioned to looking at free agency and, and making a game plan for that. And uh, that was one of my number one things. Obviously, you know, you um, you got to get paid accordingly and whatnot. That's that business side of it. But I did tell my agent that I wanted to win and I, don't, I, I didn't want to just – leave just to leave i wanted to still win and i wanted to contend because playoff hockey is a lot of fun to to be a part of and, and to be a part of a good team so um kind of once free agency open um went through the motions and and, and whatnot and, and carolina reached out and, and once they kind of reached out i it was almost like a no-brainer to me obviously they, they've been very close um for a long time and i feel like i'm going to be able to help them and hopefully get over that hump so um, I feel like they they fit my game as well, just kind of a fast, in your face, and offensive, uh, uh, flying kind of game. So I'm I'm uh, I'm looking forward to to see what the future holds here. So you said when things uh, weren't going to work out here, I I know that everybody always says I'm not thinking about the contracting season, and and maybe that's partially too. Maybe you guys don't think about it as much mm-hmm. as um, some of us would say, but. Yeah, what was it like during the year? Did did you want to try to work something out with Toronto? Like, what were the negotiations like, and, and when did you know that it wasn't going to happen? Yeah, to, to be honest, no, uh, not much went on during the season. Um, I think our, our main goal was, you know, to you know make the playoffs and, and contend for the Stanley Cup. So the season flies by um, mm-hmm. pretty fast. So I, I, it wasn't a lot of uh, contract uh, talk went on, went on during the season and then kind of, uh, once the you know the off season came along and, and whatnot, and I uh, didn't really hear much, and, and it just kind of you kind of just figured that um, it wasn't going to work out. So that's where I when I started transitioning to free agency and, and focusing on that because obviously I wanted to make sure I was in in, uh, in a good spot leading up to free agency, and and I'm, I'm really happy of how it, how it ended up uh, with with Carolina. Do you think that the Leafs front office upheaval changed any of that for you? Uh, I, I'm not really sure um, what what transpired or, or whatnot what they what they thought, but um, you know what that's the that's the business side and um, and you you can't really worry about that. You just kind of keep it going and um, and like I said, I, I'm a, I'm just looking forward to the future and, and my next ch- uh, chapter here with Carolina. But did they offer you a deal, or was it was it just kind of like preliminary talks and you guys didn't get that it, far down it, the road? It was just uh, just uh, quick talks, not nothing. Uh, nothing uh extensive did that piss you off no no like oh. like i said um that's the business and you kind of you understand just you know how how it works and you know we're we're playing in a in a cap era and um 
the cap obviously comes in situations with every single team and and um they tried their best to to make everything work and every team tries to make make uh the best team that they can w- with the cap situation that they're in so um mm-hmm. yeah that's that being said i totally understand the business side of it and and uh once free agency opened and carolina came calling i i didn't hesitate yeah um okay i'm not trying to get you in trouble i know you're still in the league and so you can be very cautious with this answer but do you feel like the refs treated you fairly last season uh yeah i think it's it's you know what um (laughs) no obviously uh the media like to you know amplify that a little bit but um that's just that's just how hockey is things happen um so fast We're, we're so emotional out there um, obviously, I can get emotional. Even the refs get emotional, and and uh, yeah, like it it, it 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 happens so fast. And I I don't hold uh, anything. Obviously, you know the Toronto media um, made that a little bit of a story. But like I said, I I I, I come in. I'm not really like that on off the ice. I come in with a laugh every day and, and a smile. And I really wasn't focused on that at all. I didn't even think about it. I just kind of wanted to go out there every single game and, and play my game and. I do know I get emotional and I get loud out there and, um, and they deal with it um, the best they can. So, um, yeah. Listen, I don't like refs. So like I'm on your side here. Okay. Like I, I think that most fans don't, uh, I know it's a hard job to have, but yeah, yeah there were yeah. definitely times last season. Cause okay. You led the league, I think in penalties drawn the year before, or at least you were damn near close. You were, you were right at the top and then it felt like it shifted and yeah, there were definitely times, man, where it, it felt personal. And I'm talking about this as like an objective viewer, where you would watch these games and you'd be like, ah, oh, damn. And, and I wonder what the process was like in terms of, you know, like who – you said it. The media makes a bigger deal, and once you're in the game and once you're in the flow of it, you're just playing, right? And I know you said you get emotional. That was very clear. You know, you're a guy who wears his heart on his sleeve when he plays the game. But – did you have talks, like, with the team, the league? Like, was there communication between you and officials, like – there, there had to be some point during the year where something was said amongst, you know, some group involving you. Uh, yeah, I, to be honest, I've never had a, a talk with the league or the head, the head officials about how everything went. Um, uh-huh. But like, I, like, like you said before, their, their job is hard. Um, and you know what? So much happens in, in a hockey game and things are so fast. And there's only two of them out there to be able to make the call. Um, obviously the linesmen are, are out there as well, but, um, you know, things are going to be missed. The game's fast. It's emotional. And, uh, yeah, I don't hold, I don't hold any grudges, um, from how, how things transpired or, or whatnot. That's just, that's just hockey. And, um, you know, I, I'll go out every single game and, and just keep playing my game and, and then they, they ref and, um, you know, they're just doing their job as well, like you said. So, um, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not really worried about that whole situation at all. Um, you, you know, what's kind of interesting talking to you, man, is so obviously, you know, you, you ask people about who you're going to interview and you try to get a feeling for somebody before you chat with them and, and, and like get a feel for like what someone's about. And, you know, your your reputation off the ice is kind of reflective in the way that you're talking to me now, which is like you're a nice guy. You're a happy go lucky <laughs> guy. You're a guy with good perspective. But then you step out on the ice. And I mean this in like a respectful way. You're you know, you're a pest. You you have this edge to your game. You play that way. And I wonder, like, what, what clicks for you? Like, is it the competitiveness? Like, how, how does that kind of shift? Because, you know, I see Ryan Reeves, right? And then I see the way he carries himself off the ice. I'm like, yeah, this makes sense that he plays this way. You know what I'm saying? Yours doesn't, yeah. like, your off-ice persona doesn't really meet up with your on-ice persona, if that makes sense. No, it, it, it absolutely does. It's kind of funny you say that because a lot of people um, that first meet me kind of don't expect – me to be how I am. I'm definitely, you know, off the ice. I love to joke around. I love keeping everything light. And, um, I'm usually always in, I'm always talking, um, and, and making the jokes and, or getting joked on. So, um, and I love all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, no, I think I, ever since I was a little kid, the second I started playing sports, I was ultra competitive and it, I don't, I don't really know. Um, but, where it comes from well actually no i know where it comes from i have a very competitive family but it's just more like i i once i put the skates on and i i get out there i i just kind of turn into that other side and i just want to win so bad and and i I definitely um you know yeah bring my emotion into the game so maybe i I build it all up from 
off the ice and just bring it onto the ice. So, um, but yeah, no, I think, you know, that complements my game and that makes the player who I am. And um, obviously it's gotten me this far and, and I was, I definitely will continue to, to play like that because um, yeah, that's just who I am. So who's the most competitive one in the house and what's the game? <laughs> I would honestly, um, I grew up with my grandpa in my house and uh, we used to play uh, Euchre a lot. Oh, yeah, um, and big euchre guy would, too. I, yes, big euchre, big euchre right. family. So I would, uh, I would have to say him. He was, uh, he was ultra competitive, and he did not like to lose. Do you table talk? Uh, no, because if we yes. table talk, that gets that <laughs> you gets hesitated down pre- pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. You, you kind of, you know, euchre, you you throw some signs through the cart. Yeah. So that's how you, <laughs> yeah. that's how you try to talk. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a classic table talker answer. Like, no, there's signs through the cards. A little hesitation. Okay, so yeah. I, I the the ref thing. Um, we meant to. I I set it up as. Uh, do you feel like they treated you fairly? I'm gonna switch this one up. Do you were you surprised by the length of the suspension after the Turnack hit? Um, you know what? Um, yeah, like this, the, the NHL made their decision. Obviously the player safety made their decision. And, uh, um, you know, I just had, I have to live with that. And, you know, it it, it was unfortunate that, you know, I put my team in that situation. Um, and I did definitely did not want to, um, injure anybody. Obviously that's not, uh, not the player I want to be. And and I have a lot of, a lot of respect for Chernak. Um, you know, we've played a lot of games against each other and we've competed a lot. And um, I actually shot him a text after that and kind of apologizing because that was not my intention at all to get him high. Mm-hmm. But um, that that being said, um, you know, you just kind of got to live with it. And, and they made decision, their, their decision, and um, I didn't know I'm fine with it. And I just tried to be the most supportive teammate I could off the ice. Um, it was it – was, it was brutal watching and being in the stands and not being, being able to be a part of it. But I just try to bring my energy um, elsewhere. Um, but, yeah, um, it's just uh, obviously you never want to get suspended um, at all, and especially not in uh, playoffs. Did Chernak text you back? Uh, yeah, I, I heard from him. I heard about um, all that. And um, like I said before, he's, uh, he's a competitor. He's a great defenseman. Um, and, you know, I actually have a lot of fun playing against him. And we kind of have this mutual respect that, you know, we would talk on the ice, but we also would battle really hard. So mm-hmm. um, it's definitely unfortunate, you know, what transpired. And that was not my intentions at all. But um, I'm happy to see. I think I saw a post on um, the NHL Instagram that, you know, he's back skating and, and healthy. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm looking forward to continue uh, playing against him. And, and obviously he's, he's done a, a lot in this league and he's, he's a good defenseman. Um, were you surprised that you weren't going to play in your first game back? Like, how, how did that conversation go, given, again, your position was a top six guy who had multiple 20-goal seasons? No, I, you know what? I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. Um, I, have, uh, I have a great relationship with, with Sheldon, and, mm. um, you know, he just sat me down and, and, and told me the reasoning, and I, I, I respected it, and I, I totally understood it. You know, I think we won three in a row there, so – um, when it ain't broke, don't, don't try to fix it. So I, I totally understood and I wanted what was, whatever they thought was the best for the team. I, I was all for it. So, um, like I said, I just wanted to bring my energy, bring my positive energy and, and be supportive of the guys and, and help out as any way as I could. And I, I felt like that I did that for the time that I was out. Yeah. I mean, there was no fuss. So I, I think that that's pretty much kind of what you can ask for. It's interesting. Like you say, Keith was part of the reason that you came to Toronto and that you had a good relationship with him because again, from the outside perspective, it seemed like you guys had real frustrations with one another throughout the year. Like, do you think that was an overblown story, a misunderstood story? Like what was misunderstood about your guys' relationship? Yeah. Like the, that's just uh, another little example, but I, like I said, I don't really let anything uh, phase me and, and all that. I just kind of just rolled with everything, but you know, Sheldon's a unbelievable coach. He, he, uh, he kind of started my career in in, in the Sioux, and I mm-hmm. built a really good relationship with there uh, with him there, and and he was one of the reasons why I wanted to come to Toronto. And I, I said that in the meeting, but yeah, they put it. So uh, we never said that we could talk to one another, and um, he obviously I play with a lot of emotion, and, and I can you know I try not to step over line, um, and sometimes I did, and he would just tell me and. Um, I would I would listen to exactly what he would say, and um, I always had respect for him. And and uh, yeah, like you said, it just on the outside, maybe looking in, it looked like like that, but that I can definitely say that was not the case at all. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, I would say too that you could see how, like, he obviously can run hot. You on the ice can clearly run hot. You could see how people would be like, okay, we're going to take this one clip and it's going to end up. I think social media has really changed this too, especially in, like in the way that we perceive things because you'll see like a clip over and over and over again um, or it'll be shared like a million different times. But yeah, <laughs> you could see how like two guys with a history together could get into it with one another and then just end up being fine later, right? Like I, I think that's a lot oh, of yeah. business. As somebody who runs hot, you know, who's a competitive Euchre player herself, uh, yeah. I can, I can, yeah, uh, testify to that. Um, okay, so uh, I guess last one from me on this um, is how sweet was it to beat Tampa? I think just you know, uh, I wouldn't even say um, just because it was it was Tampa. I think obviously just you know being able to you know get over that hump of that first round, like mm-hmm. we aren't. Uh, oblivious naive to that that you know that we we haven't made it out of the uh the first round in, in, in quite some time so um you know for us to to get over that hump last year it just felt great and um you know um unfortunately we weren't able to extend that but um mm-hmm. the playoffs is a is a different animal and and looking for they they went through the top three out of the top like three of the top five teams in the nhl mm-hmm. to get to the stanley cup final and and you got to tip your cap there, and you know they had a they had a great run, and and they they got hot at the right time. So, um, yeah, that was just unfortunate how that happened, but uh, for us, but yeah, I know it, it felt good to you know win that round, and and um, and we definitely uh, felt like maybe you know it, it can calm down a little bit, but um, yeah, it didn't. <laughs> yeah, it calmed down for like a second, and then game one of the next round happened, and it was obviously not calm. It was not calm yeah. here whatsoever. Uh, yeah, hey man, uh, again, congrats on the big contract. Um, good luck with everything down in Carolina. Um, enjoy what I'm assuming is going to be, you know, a massive house down there because I also feel like everybody in Carolina is just like a, a mega mansion. Uh, and then yeah, enjoy yeah playing for Rod Brinbor and just yeah being with that organization. And good luck with everything, man. Congrats. Yeah. Thanks a lot. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I guess uh, we'll we'll see you when I'm in Toronto. Absolutely. Take care, man. Michael Bunting, right. Carolina Hurricanes forward. Cheers.